Welcome to this easy 11 plus short lesson. We're going to be looking at a common kind of 11 plus maths question that's really hard to name. I'm going to call it the how many Roberts question for reasons that will become apparent as you watch the rest of this video. As always, the worksheet for today's lesson is down there in the video description, along with lots of other useful links, which I encourage you to explore. If you find this lesson useful, please remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell button. And don't forget that my Easy 11 Plus live lessons are every Tuesday evening at six o'clock. Let's get started. So here is the Roberts question that I referred to. So it takes Robert two hours to write seven maths questions. If Roberts always write maths questions at the same rate, how long would it take five Roberts to write 105 maths questions? Now this looks horrendously complicated. I'm gonna show you a simple method that you can use for any question of this type and which will make it easy. And the basic principle is that you need to start off by building a table like this. So I've put the columns Roberts, Hours and Questions. Working in an exam, you could just write R, H and Q or something like that, just as long as it's clear for you and as long as the examiner can work out what's going on. And we're gonna start off by putting in the information that we already know. So one Robert takes two hours to write seven maths questions. Now we know that Roberts always write math questions at the same rate, so we don't need to worry about random elements such as one Robert being lazier than another. We can assume that all these Roberts are the same. How long would it take five Roberts to write 105 maths questions? Now the basic principle when you're working with a table like this is that you only change one thing at a time. So we need to change either the number of questions or the number of Roberts. Getting from one Robert to five Roberts is pretty simple, so let's do that. We now have five Roberts. Let's see how many questions these five Roberts could write in the same amount of time. So we've increased the number of Roberts fivefold. So they're going to produce five times as many questions. And seven times five is 35. But we need 105 maths questions. So we've still got five Roberts but we've got 105 questions that they write. So what have we done to 35 to get to 105? Well, we've times it by three. And if they need to write three times as many questions, but you've got the same number of Roberts, it's going to take them three times as long. Three times two is six. In each row, we're making one deliberate change, and that causes another change. So one way of looking at it is to say that we always leave one thing the same. So here we've left two hours the same, and here we've left five Roberts the same. And this way the answer pops out really easily. It would take five Roberts six hours to write 105 questions. Don't forget to write the units Six isn't an answer, is that six minutes, six seconds, six days, you need to write six hours. From robots to robots. So now we've got robots taking time to make thread. So I'm going to label my columns. Now you might ask why the last column is labeled product and not thread, and that's because time and thread both begin with the letter T. So it's best to keep things nice and distinct. It'll make life easier later on if we just want to label our columns R, T, and P. So we know that four robots take 12 minutes to make 30 kilometers of thread. How long would it take them to make 100 kilometers of thread? So we've got them in the question. That must mean the four robots. So we're going to keep the number of robots the same. And that means it's the other two things that are going to change. Now we don't know the time, that's what we're looking for, so we're gonna to have to change the length. So to get from 30 kilometers to 100 kilometers, we times by three and a third. That's a little bit fiddly. If we do it in stages, we can just work with whole numbers. Let's go from 30 kilometers to 10 kilometers. That's divided by three. And if we only have to produce a third as much thread, then we only need a third as much time to do it probably don't need to do a side calculation there, you know that a third of 12 is 4. And now we've got 10 kilometres, it's quite easy to get to 100 kilometres. Of course we need to times by 10. 
still got four robots. So this is going to times by 10 as well, because it's going to take 10 times as long to produce 10 times as much thread. And so our answer is very simply 40 minutes. We can just write mins and that's absolutely fine. So this is actually quite a simple question if you break it down in this way using the table and labeling it clearly. And it's made nice and easy by the fact that the number of robots in the left column never needs to change. Let's look at part B. How long would it take one robot to make 1000 kilometers of thread? Now the last part of part A left us with 100 kilometers. So that might be a good starting point from which to work. I'm just using R, T and P now to save time because we've established what these mean. And you can see that I've written in the information that we ended up with at the end of part A. We've got four robots here, but we want to know about one robot as the question requires. So let's start off by making that change. And let's say that this robot is still making 100 kilometers of thread because we know that later we can get from 100 to 1000 kilometers quite easily. We've divided the number of robots by four. Now this is where we do something a little bit different because what happens if you just divide 40 by four? Let's think about what this means. We are saying that if we have fewer robots, they'll actually do the job more quickly. That doesn't make sense. You have to bear in mind the situation and what's going on. We shouldn't be dividing by four at all. If we've got a quarter as many robots, then that one robot is going to need four times as much time to do the job. So we've divided by four on the left. Here we need two times by four. And 40 times four is 160. Let's recap that because it's important. We've decreased the number of workers, which means that our new number is going to need more time to do the job. So if one column is divided by four, the other column needs to multiply by four. And now we've got 100 kilometers of thread produced by one robot, but we need to find out how long it would take that one robot to make a thousand kilometers. Well, to make 10 times as much thread, it's going to take them 10 times as long. So the answer is 1600 minutes. Now, this might well be marked as correct, but it isn't very normal to express time answers in minutes when there's a length of time that's greater than an hour. So it would be good to simplify this into hours and minutes. And you convert minutes to hours if you divide by 60, because there are 60 minutes in an hour. Simplifying there, dividing the top and the bottom by 10, and then dividing the top and the bottom by two. Twenty-six remainder two is twenty-six and two-thirds when we're dividing by three, and two-thirds of an hour is 40 minutes. So we have, and hours and minutes is absolutely fine. You don't need to write one day, two hours, 40 minutes, although of course that would be correct as well. Now we're looking at 10 robots and one minute. We could start with any of our values from the previous questions and we would get there in the end. So you could even start, for example, with one and 1600 and a thousand that we ended with at the end of the previous part. But those are some pretty big numbers, a pretty long way from 10 robots and one minute. I prefer to go back to the numbers that we started with at the top of the question. So we don't know how much thread, so we can't start by changing that because we don't know what we're heading towards. We can start by changing the number of robots or the amount of time. I think that going to one minute is a bit tricky because it involves dividing by 12. So instead, I'm gonna change the number of robots. We started with four robots, we want 10 robots. So we can get from four to 10 if we times by two and a half, or we can do it in stages. Why don't we go to two robots first of all? We're dividing by two in both cases because if you decrease the number of workers, you'll also decrease the amount of product, the amount of thread that they can make. 
but we want to get to 10 robots here. So we've times the number of robots by 5. So we're also going to times the amount of thread, the amount of product, by 5. And that gives us 75. So now we know that 10 robots could make 75 kilometers of thread in 12 minutes. But we need to know how much they could make in one minute. One minute is a twelfth of 12 minutes. So if we've reduced the amount of time they have 12 times, we need to do the same with the amount that they can make, because if they have less time, they can make less. Now 75 divided by 12 is a bit tricky, so we're going to need to do a side calculation for this. It's often best to start with a fraction to see whether we can simplify it. 75 divided by 12. Remember that the dividing line in a fraction means divided by. That line can also be called the vinculum. 75 and 12 can both be divided by 3. 75 divided by 3 is 25 and 12 divided by 3 is 4. So what we really need to work out is 25 divided by 4. 24 is divisible by 4. 24 divided by 4 gives us 6. But it doesn't go exactly. So to get a decimal answer we add 0 0.0 here. We've got a remainder of 1. 4 goes into 10 two times. But there's still a remainder. We add another 0. 4 goes into 20 five times. And we need to put the decimal point that was on the bottom here in our answer in the same place. So the answer is 6.25. You can also work that out mentally if you want to. 25 divided by 2 is 12 and a half. 12 and a half divided by 2 is 6 and a quarter. So the answer is 6.25 kilometers because the length of thread is being measured in kilometers. So again, the numbers here look horrendous, but if you just follow the method through with the table and you don't make any silly mistakes, the right answer is going to pop out at the end of it. You can use the same method for any question of this sort. Just pay attention at each stage to whether you need to multiply or divide, and whether you're multiplying together or dividing together, or whether one column needs to multiply while another column divides. Now this has got really fiddly wording. What is the minimum number of robots needed if you want to make more than 15 kilometers of thread in three minutes? There's a lot there to confuse you, but I would start off in the same way and let's see what we can do trying to find an answer for 15 kilometers in three minutes. Let's see what comes out at the end of that process. Once again, we've got a choice of which set of numbers we start with. And again, you could start with any numbers and you would get to the right answer in the end. However, once again, I like the starting numbers, which are 4, 12 and 30. I like these because I'm looking at 15 kilometers of thread, which is half of 30 kilometers, and 3 minutes, and 3 is a factor of 12. So we've got some numbers which might well be quite easy to reach from this starting point, and that's why I've chosen these numbers rather than choosing, for example, 10, 1, and 6.25 from our previous answer, which would be quite fiddly by comparison. As I mentioned before, it's really easy to get to 15 kilometers straight from 30 kilometers, so let's do that. Let's stick with the same amount of time and see how our number of robots would change. 30 to 15 divided by 2. If we've reduced the amount of thread that we make, then it must be because we've reduced the number of robots, because fewer workers will make less product. So we divide that by 2 as well. So we get 2. Two robots will make 15 kilometers of thread in 12 minutes. But we want to find out how many robots will be needed to do it in three minutes. We want to end up with 15 kilometers of thread, and we already have that in the right-hand column, so let's keep that. And we don't, don't know how many robots are going to be needed, but we do know that they need to do it in three minutes. To get from 12 minutes to three minutes, you divide by four. Now, if you want to produce the same amount of stuff in less time, then you're going to need more robots to do the job. They're going to work faster, you need more workers. So you always have to keep focused on what the situation actually is so you know whether to divide or multiply. In this case, less time is going to need more robots. So we divided by four here, we multiply by four here. And two times four 
is 8. So we know that 8 robots would make 15 kilometers of thread in 3 minutes. But look at the question. We need to make more than 15 kilometers of thread. 8 robots would make exactly 15 kilometers of thread. To make more than that amount, we need at least 9 robots. So that's the answer. Why not eight and a half robots? Because half a robot wouldn't be able to do anything. We're working in whole numbers of robots here. So the minimum number, the smallest number that would do this job is nine robots. So the method that we followed is just the same as I've already demonstrated. And the main thing here, when it comes to the awkward wording in the question, minimum and more than, is to ignore those things at the beginning. Do the maths that you know, and then consider how those concepts might apply once your answer comes out at the end. I hope that's helped. It's quite a common question type. I'm still not sure what to call it, but whatever it's called, with that table method applied carefully, you will always be able to answer these questions in an exam without staring at them in confusion for 10 minutes. If you found this useful, please like, subscribe and click the bell button. Don't forget to explore the links in the video description and have a look at the other videos on my channel. And I hope to see you back here at six o'clock next Tuesday for my next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. Bye-bye.